Hey everyone, and welcome to MacTuts Plus. Today, I'll be showing you how to create an awesome looking invoice in Numbers. So let's get started. Open Numbers, and then select File and New. Numbers comes with a variety of templates. We can select either a blank template, templates related to personal finance, business or education. Hovering the mouse over the template displays a preview. The template we're going to customise today is the built-in invoice template. This will preload all of the information that we require, but we're going to tweak it and make it more suitable to our needs. As you can see, the template loads a lot of information that we'd need in an invoice. Before we continue, it's a good idea to enable the print view. This way, we know if anything overlaps on the pages. Select View, Show Print View, and we'll be given a page outline so we know exactly how they look when they're printed. Let's take a quick look at the invoice. We can see some contact information that we can add to the top, including invoice number and project description. Below this, we can add lines of information regarding any work or services provided. We have several columns for description, quantity, unit price and cost. Numbers even adds a tax option at the bottom and will automatically calculate a total amount of tax. So I can customise the layout further, I'm just going to remove the text box from the bottom. I select this and simply click delete. To get a general idea of how it currently looks if we were to print this invoice, I'm going to use the print preview option. You can do this by selecting file, print. It's a good idea to regularly do this whilst you're creating a new template or invoice. That way, you know exactly how it looks if it were to be printed. Now, I'm going to move the description table further down the page. As you move it around, you will notice there are alignment grids that appear. These are highlighted in blue and will allow you to keep the table centred or aligned left or right. Next. I'm going to move the other table further down the page. This will give me room to add some of our company information. I'm going to delete the invoice header as it's simply a text box and we're going to replace this with something more dynamic. We'll be using the numbers inspector quite a lot in this tutorial so I'd recommend resizing the window and having it displayed at all times. We'll add our company information, so click on text box and a text box will appear within your document. Enter some information. You can keep the text box aligned using the alignment grid that appears. I've just resized the text box as I'm going to be adding some further information. As you can see, I'm adding a full address information to the text box. This is our company information and will be displayed on every invoice. We can customise the font using the toolbar, or we can use the font menu and having it displayed at all times. Select Format, Fonts, Show Fonts. With the font palette shown, I'm going to adjust the text size. And to make our company name stand out more, I'm going to select just that line and make it bold. Text boxes are very versatile and we can add a web address which numbers will automatically convert into a clickable link. This will also be available when we print this and save it as a PDF. If you email invoices regularly, they'll also be able to click on this link and open it in a web browser. Next, we're going to add a table to include invoice numbers and payment terms. Select Table and then Plain. A new table will appear in the invoice. The table at the moment is far too big for what we need it for, so I'm just going to resize it and make it a little smaller. This will include removing some columns and rows. Next, I'm going to enter invoice, and we're going to enter a field to use for invoice numbers. Now, we could just enter the invoice number every time we use it and manually change it. However, you may forget this or forget which number you need to use. This would mean opening up previous invoices and seeing what their number is. We're going to make it a little bit easier and have a stepper 
This means we can use an up or down button to adjust the number. Select the cell where we've just added the invoice number and using the inspector on the right hand side of the screen here, select the option that has the number 42. This allows us to format cells. Under cell format, select stepper. As you can see, we can use a minimum, a maximum and specify the increment. Set the maximum to a very large number. Make sure there is no decimals as we don't want any point numbers within our invoice number. As you can see, our invoice number has remained the same, but there is an up and down button next to it. This allows us to easily adjust it by one increment. We don't need any additional columns, so I'm just going to remove column C. So now we're just left with a two column table. Here we can readjust accordingly and make sure everything is nicely aligned. Next, I'm going to add that all important date field. Using the inspector again, we can format this cell to expect a date and time. We don't need a time for an invoice, so we can change that to none. We can then change the date format to whatever we'd like. I prefer using day, month, year. Now, it doesn't matter how you enter the date as long as you enter it in an expected format. As you can see, I entered 12 slash 12 slash 13. Numbers automatically adjusted that to the 12th of December 2013. Next, we'll add another table field, this time for payment terms. Depending on the clients that you're invoicing, you may want the invoice to be payable on receipt or there may be some payment terms you've offered such as 7 days or 30 days. Rather than enter these manually, we can come up with a drop down menu, allowing us to simply select the option we need. This avoids us forgetting the option or making a mistake when entering it. Again, using the inspector, change the cell format. The one we're going to use is pop up menu. Numbers places three options in there, the numbers 1, 2 and 3. We're going to change these, so remove them using the minus button and you can add new ones using the plus button. Enter the options pay on receipt, 7 days, 30 days. Once you've added these options, you will now see a drop down arrow appear next to the payment terms cell. Here we can use either of these options. Now we need to resize the column so that we get the full information in. Again, as you change the table you may need to reorientate some of the other options such as the text box. Moving along slightly, I've adjusted the table and changed some of the fonts with regards to colour and font weight. I've also done away with the original table we had that included some of the client's information such as purchase order number and contact info. We're going to recreate this but use something that's more suitable to our needs. Insert another table, again we'll use the plain option. We're going to add a field for contact info but we're going to use it in a similar way to the payment terms where we have a drop down option. Selecting the first cell and then the options for cell format, we're going to use pop-up menu again. Now a limitation of the pop-up menu is that when you're entering text within the inspector, it will only accept single line fields. This means if you try and press enter, if you wanted to do a multi-line value, say an address for example, we can't do that. The reason for this is we can't use multi-lines when we press enter in the inspector. However, numbers will actually accept multi-line values, such as addresses. The way to do this is to use a bit of a cheat. We're going to open up TextEdit, create a new text document, 
and we're just going to type out the name and the address of the contact. If you need to mark it for the attention of anyone specific, you can add this at the first line as well. Once we've completed our address, select all of the text and then copy it. Go back to Numbers, change the pop-up menu, delete the contents and then Paste. Now if we adjust the width of the column and the height of the row, we can see a multi-line value. We're only going to use this table for client contact information, so we can remove all but the first row and all but the first column. Next, head back to text edit and then add some more addresses. Again, we're going to use this trick of entering them in text edit first, copying them and then pasting them back into numbers. So we simply create a new pop-up menu item and copy and paste the remaining addresses. You can add any contact information whenever you invoice a new client. They will then appear in the pop-up menu, allowing you to easily select them when you create recurring invoices. You may prefer organizing them by company name and removing the FAO field at the top. This is entirely your choice. If you find yourself dealing with many clients and this list becoming quite full, it will take up a lot of space on the screen and at that point you may need to switch to a more dedicated invoicing service. Now we've completed our client table, let's adjust the font size and colour. I'm going to move the top table that we created before with the invoice number and date and payment terms and align it with our client information. This will also free up some room on the top left if we'd like to include a logo. The alignment grid in numbers is very clever and it will allow us to align to tables that are nearby rather than just align to the entire page. Next, I'm going to customize the description table. This is because the invoicing that I'll be doing will be using an hourly rate. We're going to leave the table largely untouched. So here we're going to enter a description of a particular piece of work we've done, the number of hours that we've spent doing it, and the hourly rate. As you can see, the cost is automatically generated. And at the bottom, the subtotal and tax are calculated to provide us with the grand total. If we add more work, which I've done on this second line, the totals all increase automatically. Here in the UK, sales tax is 20%. I don't need to adjust anything else, just change the number. Numbers automatically calculates this and updates the totals automatically. Before saving or printing, it's a good idea to remove all these empty fields, as they're just taking up needless space. We can select them all and select Delete Selected Rows from the drop down menu when we hover over the Rows option. As we've not finished, I'm going to undo that and keep them there for now. As you can see, our invoice is almost complete. We need to include some information about how our clients can pay us. To do this, we'll just add a text box at the bottom providing some information regarding payment availability. I'm going to include some generic bank information. However, because we can save these as PDFs and the links will be created, like we did earlier when we added our company web address, we could include a link to a PayPal account. So if you wanted to generate an invoice but have them pay via PayPal, you could use your PayPal account to create a simple link that your clients can click on and then pay by credit or debit card. Alternatively, if you use any other online merchants, such as Stripe, you'll be able to create a link to a payment page that you can use. 
And that's our template nearly complete. Let's see what it looks like so far. Select File and Print. We're going to have a look at a proper PDF preview. So we're going to click on PDF, Open PDF in Preview. And this is what our invoice will look like as a PDF or when it's printed. As you can see, it's looking really smart. We've got all the information we need and everything's nicely laid out and aligned. Now we don't want to keep having to modify templates again and again. Instead, we can save this as a template. Select File, Save as Template. And you'll see that iWork has its own templates folder. Change the export as name to the template name of your choice. Then hit Save. Now, whenever you want to create an invoice, simply select File New from Template Chooser. And you'll see an option now on the left hand side called My Templates. In here are any templates that you save. Before saving a template, I'd recommend removing any information, such as the hourly rates that are put in there and any other information that may be related to a specific client. Keep your template as generic as possible, that way there's less to change every time you use it. And that's it. You'll now be able to create some great looking invoices within Numbers. We don't need any specialised invoice software, we can do it all just within the application. Thanks for watching this tutorial on MacTouch Plus. If you have any comments or feedback, leave them in the comments section below.